Okay, good song, but that's not true. You don't have to end up dead or in jail. You could love Jesus and watch math videos and become very powerful. Okay, anyway, um, let's finish this uh, part A, which is um, the no calculator part of this uh, 2012 AP Calculus AB International Practice Exam with problem 28. And problem 28 says, for uh, t greater or equal to zero, <laughs> Uh, the position function of a particle moving along the x-axis is given by x of t, so this is the position function, uh, which is equal to sine t minus cosine t. And what we're asked for is the acceleration of the particle at the point where the velocity is first equal to zero. Pay attention. Where the velocity is first equal to zero. So that means that the velocity must be equal to zero m on more than one occasion. Uh, and we must find out what the acceleration is the first time the velocity is equal to zero. Okay, in any case, we need to get to A of t, the acceleration function, which we know is the second derivative of the position function, or the first derivative of the velocity function, uh, which would, of course, imply that V of t, the velocity function, is the first derivative of the acceleration function. So, um, to get to these guys, since we know the position function, we just take a couple of derivatives. So x prime of t, which is going to equal v of t, is going to be sine t minus the derivative of cosine, which is negative, oh, sorry about that, derivative of sine, which is cosine t, and then minus the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine t. So this is going to say cosine t plus sine t, getting sloppy towards the end, huh? Okay, cool. And then x double prime of t, which is a of t, is going to be, well, the derivative of velocity, as I've already said here, right? a of t is the derivative of velocity, pairing the, this guy and this guy up. And so then, um, we could, since we just got the velocity here, um, we could just take the derivative of that. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine t, and then plus the derivative of sine, which is cosine t. And we're mathematicians, so we don't like starting with negative, so we write cos t minus sine t. Now, we've got our acceleration function right here. This is a of t. And we've got our velocity function here. So once we figure out where velocity is equal to zero for the first time, we're on the home stretch. So to figure out where velocity is equal to zero for the first time, we should try to figure out where it's equal to zero, period. It's equal to zero when cosine t is equal to negative sine t. Um, that, of course, means negative cosine t is equal to sine t. And dividing this last equation by cosine on both sides, we could write negative one is equal to sine t over cosine t. And of course, the statement is saying where tangent of t is equal to negative one. And you could watch basic trig equation solving, mine or someone else's, um, and learn that um, tangent t is equal to zero, or sorry, tangent t is equal to negative one at two possible places. So the mnemonic was all students take calculus or another stupid trig chart which told you which functions, which of the six trig functions are positive where. Here, all six are positive. Um, here, only sine and cosecant. Here, only tangent and cotangent. And here, only cosine and um, secant. And by here, I mean the quadrants one, two, three, and four, respectively. Okay, cool. So we need to know where tangent is negative since we have tangent t is equal to negative one. Tangent is negative here or here. Okay, and we also need tangent's value, absolute value, to be 1, so it must be that we're talking about a 45 degree inclination. So it must be that a reference angle here will give us 45 degrees, and so will a reference triangle and a reference angle there. So our reference angle is 45 in both instances, and our reference triangle we could get to if we close these guys off. Okay, yep. And let's close this triangle off by dropping a perpendicular to the x and likewise here. Okay, got it. So we don't really need to be this precise, but fine. So it's clear that the two angles that we're after 
um, and radian measures are 3 pi over 4. So that's x equals 3 pi over 4. And in all of these instances, you should be using radian measures. And because um, otherwise, degree measures for time do not make sense, right? And then this other angle has to be 7 pi over 4. Um, or the radian measure has to be 7 pi over 4. So I wrote x's, but you know, you know, I meant t's. So you know, t equals seven pi over four, and then t equals um, three pi over four. The two t values that get tangent to be equal to negative one, which means where velocity is equal to zero, right? That's how we got to this by setting velocity equal to zero. So velocity is equal to zero looks like for the first time at t equals three pi over four. And then again at t equals 7 pi over 4, but all along we didn't care about 7 pi over 4 because it said to find the acceleration when the velocity is first equal to 0. So we just need to evaluate a of t for t equals 3 pi over 4, which is where the velocity is first equal to 0. So a of t, we already know, is this fella. So plugging in 3 pi over 4 into it, we get cosine of... 3 pi over 4, and then minus sine of 3 pi over 4. Okay, now, um, for the calculation of cosine of 3 pi over 4 and sine of 3 pi over 4, we would have used this reference triangle in the second quadrant. And if we quickly label it, we could label it 1, 1, root 2. And we know that only sine and cosecant are positive there, so cosine is going to be negative, and its value is 1 over root 2, um, specifically negative 1 over root 2, which is going to be negative root 2 over 2. So cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And then we have minus sine of 3 pi over 4, since our reference triangle is a 45 degree triangle, should be the same value, but sine is positive. So we have minus, because a of t had a minus sine, and then the value of sine of 3 pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. So um, this is literally saying like minus x minus x if we called it root 2 over 2x. And that would clearly be minus 2x. So this should just be minus 2 times, well, yeah, minus 2 times our x, of course, is root 2 over 2. So minus 2 times root 2 over 2, which is negative root 2. And that would mean that the answer is A. Yes, done. Okay, um, keep watching. We're only done for the no calculator part. I'll have videos for the calculator part, and then also we'll have videos for free responses um, for the 2014 and 2013 for A, B, and B, C calculus exams soon. And I will also create solutions for the A, B multiple choice of 2008, um, and I will do the same for B, C. So look out for those. Um, I hope you're enjoying these and learning a lot. Take care.